All right, good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. To those who are fired up to sing for the Lord, say amen. 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 Let's sing. Drink. Amen, amen. Just by amen, amen. So such a to pray. Amen, amen. Drink. Amen, amen. Just by amen, amen. So such a to pray. Amen, amen. Bel pre on troll amen. You think on and sing, amen, amen. Bel pre on troll amen. You think on and sing, amen, amen. Sing, amen, amen. Sing, amen, amen. You think on and sing, amen, amen. Sing, amen, amen. Sing, amen, amen. You think on and sing, amen, amen. Sing. Amen, amen, rejoice, amen, amen, glory be to God, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, rejoice, amen, amen, glory be to God, amen, amen, when the Lord shall come again, let the people sing, amen, amen, when the Lord shall come again, let the people sing, amen, amen, sing, amen. Let the people sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen. Let the people sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, just by amen, amen. So such a to play, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, just by amen, amen. So such a to play, amen, amen. Bel pre on troll amen. You think on un sing, amen, amen. Bel pre on troll amen. You think on un sing, amen, amen. Sing, amen, amen. Sing, amen, amen. You think on un sing, amen, amen. Sing, amen, amen. Sing, amen, amen. You think on un sing, amen, amen. You think on un sing, amen, amen. You think on un sing. Ma 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 lo, i dan dan ma lo, i dan dan ma lo, i dan dan i dan dan. What he said he do? He's gonna give us sisters. I dan dan. He's gonna give us sisters. I dan dan. He's gonna give us sisters. He done done what he said he do, ma 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 lord. He done done my lord. He done done my lord. He done done he done done what he said he do. He's gonna give us brothers. He done done. He's gonna give us brothers. He done done. He's gonna give us brothers. He done done. He done done what he said he do. My ma 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 lord. He done done my lord. He done done my lord. He done done. He done done what he said he do. He's gonna give us a Bible. He done done. He's gonna give us the Bible. He's gonna give us the Bible. He done done what he said he do. My ma 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 lord. He done done my lord. He done done my lord. He done done he done done what he said he do. He's gonna give us Jesus. He's gonna give us Jesus. He's gonna give us Jesus. He done done what he said he'd do. My ma 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 lord. He done done my lord. He done done my lord. He done done he done done what he said he'd do. He done done what he said he'd do. He done done what he said he'd do. Hey, there you go,
fired up to be here. Bye-bye. Amen. I want to call everyone to come a little bit closer. Amen. If there's like vacancies right in front of you, uh, let those uh, lay people come in and then they can sit over there. Amen. But let's move, let's move a little bit. Let's remove the denominational seating. We're not a denominational church. Amen. Let's go. And then say amen if you are fired up to be alive. Amen. I'm not convinced. One more. Are you fired up to be alive? Amen. Amen. The truth is we could have died last night. But God gave us another chance today. Amen. So let's start. Today, today is Sunday. We got to worship God with all of our might. Amen. Amen. So let's sing this song with me. We have the lyrics right here. So you could, you could actually follow in this. Amen. All right. Let me just... Amen. We are one in the spirit. Let's sing. I will call upon the Lord. Oh, who is worthy to be praised? So shall I be saved from my enemies. Because you know the Lord liveth. And blessed be the rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. I'll tell you know the Lord living and blessed be the rock let the God salvation be exalted oh magnify the Lord magnify oh who is worthy to be praised so shall I be saved from my enemies because you know the Lord living and blessed be the rock let the God of my salvation be exalted oh tell you know the Lord living and blessed be the rock let the God be exalted and let us praise the Lord of Lord oh praise him now and evermore praise the Father Son and the Spirit you know the Lord live it and that's be the rock let God of my salvation be exalted oh tell you know the Lord live it and that's be the rock let God salvation be exalted oh tell we'll sing hallelujah hallelujah he lives oh he lives hallelujah Praise God. Praise God. Oh, he lives. He lives in me. You know the Lord. Oh, blessed be the rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. Oh, say you know the Lord. Live it. And blessed be the rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. Sing it one more time. Lord live it and bless be the rock let the God salvation be exalted oh tell you know the Lord live it and bless be the rock let the God of my salvation be exalted oh say I will call upon the Lord I will call upon the Lord Amen let us all be seated Amen Good morning, everyone. One more time. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, so uh, I'm Rafael De Jesus, and I'm with a beautiful sister here, Jera Carmen. So we have, uh, have the charge to welcoming everyone. So let's open our Bibles in the book of Philippians. Last week, there is a big event that happened. Oh, yes. That's why our beloved evangelist and our shepherd went there for two weeks to attend the Global Leadership Conference. Oh, yes. And if you didn't watch it online, you need to repent. <laughs> so you can go to the uh, City of Angels International Christian Church YouTube channel to check all the preachings and what happened during those two weeks uh, uh, conference. So let's open our Bibles in Philippians chapter 4. And let's read in verse 4. 
The Bible reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. So that's very uh, short scripture is our, uh, our theme uh, welcoming scripture this morning. And my observation here is very amazing. So Apostle Paul he here is talking to the whole church of Philippi. And he said, rejoice not in the circumstances, uh, uh, but rejoice where? In the Lord. Because he himself, Paul, Paul, understood that we have a lot of battles, trials, and circumstances that we are fighting on right now. Even he, that time, is in prison at that time. He's writing that letter from, uh, from bars of, uh, of, uh, of a jail. And the whole Philippian church in this time, if you're going to read the whole book of Philippians, you're going to read an internal church conflict and uh, external, uh, external conflict that they are ex experiencing right, uh, right there. But Paul telling us is to, to rejoice in the Lord. How often? Always. 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 <laughs> Always. It's not... If you're, you have a bad day yesterday, if you have sick yesterday, if you have a lot of bad days. But the Bible said, Paul said is, rejoice in the Lord, not in our salary. Not in our, uh, if you have a good night's sleep. <laughs> if you have, uh, if you had an encouraging sister or brother in the household. <laughs> But it said, rejoice in the Lord always. Right. So on, what amazing here, brothers and sisters and visitors, is Paul is talking, he's uh, talking there twice. Like if you, if you know, if you're going to notice, he said, I will say again, rejoice. You remember your mom keep reminding you of, of, use of, of something? Oh, yes. yeah. don't, forget, uh, <laughs> don't forget to buy this. <laughs> I remember when I always lost my umbrella of my mom. And I'm going to borrow again and then don't lose it. Again, don't lose it. <laughs> and here, Paul said, I will say again. If I'm going to write a lot, another letter to, you, to the Philippian church, I'm going to say, uh, I will say it again. I will always reminding you to always rejoice in the Lord. So brothers and sisters, this morning, forget what happened. It, it, uh, it is what it is. But for this... Uh, for this time moving on, let's put our heart, whole heart, in the service this morning in serving our and worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's give, I'm uh, going to give you the awesome sister, Jerry Carmen, for the sisters. Good morning, sisters! I want to greet a special welcome to all the women who are with us today. I'm so fired up to say Sung, who's with us today, and also Nanay Rose, of course, and Kim Lang, and Aya. So I'm so grateful to see you this morning. And I love the scripture that Raphael has shared because it brings me back to, you know, to what God says, to be rejoicing. Amen. Always. Not just one day, but always. I know this is challenging, but with God, it is very possible. You know, and the scripture is on fire and convicting, right? Because that means that whatever you're going through right now, despite of circumstances, rejoicing is a decision. You know, it's a decision to be joyful in God. Right, sisters? And today, I just want to encourage you to be joyful because you are grateful. Wow. Amen. Th thank you, Jera. So uh, yeah, uh, again, uh, let's. I uh, will remind everyone to prepare your hearts, your notes, your Bibles, as we continue to uh, to worship God this morning. And with that, we want to welcome, welcome you to the Sunday worship, worship service, service of the Phnom Penh International, International Christian, Christian Church. Church. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And I, wa I want to uh, I want to call uh, our sister uh, Nick Nick to pray for us. Please bow down and pray. Me, so I'm so rich at hand. We know. Pray, God, that Kong Tan Su, 
អត់ខ្ញុំប្រអងសម្រាប់ថ្ងៃនេះដែលពួកយើងមានអាកាសអត់ថ្វាយបង្គំទ្រង់និងសរសារតម្កាន់នៃ uh, Greetings family from New Delhi, India, and welcome to another thrilling episode of the Good News Network. My name is Luke Speckman. And I'm Brandon Speckman. And we are so excited to share with you our God's incredible miracles across the sold-out discipling movement, as well as to premiere season two, episode 10 in Anaheim, California, where many in our family of churches have gathered together for the long-anticipated 2022 Global Leadership Conference, the first in-person GLC in four years. Wow, and we have so much to share from these past two months of jubilant June and July. To start, we'll begin with updating you on the glorious inaugural services and missions conferences witnessed these past two months. Then we have an unprecedented announcement coming to you from Sold Out Press International and a heartwarming report from our annual Day of Mercy this past June. Following that will be a day in the life of Alejandra Hernandez, an intern in the Bogota, Colombia International Christian Church. And then we'll close out by sharing with you the good news from around the world. So we begin in the Northeast USA and Middle East nations now called the Promised Land World Sector, led courageously by Corey and G. Blackwell of New York City. Just a few weeks ago on July 10, Portland, Maine, known as the Casco Bay ICC, held its inaugural service. Also in the Promised Land World Sector was the planting of Manchester, New Hampshire on July 24th. In the Tribe World Sector was the inaugural of what was once the Tijuana, Mexico region of San Diego, but now has a officially become the Tijuana International Christian Church. Very excitingly, Naga Philippines had their inaugural service on July 24th. God blessed them with an astounding attendance of 117, 64 of whom were non-Christian visitors and four baptisms. Amazingly, three of the four baptisms were met by the Naga mission team leader, JC Jose. As well, so encouraging to Ricky and Colleen Chalinor, the overseeing ministry couple of Southeast Asia, their five-year-old daughter, Mina, had had two visitors. And at the end of the month, on July 31st, Taipei, Taiwan was planted by five daring disciples. Amazingly, with no visiting disciples, those five had an astounding 31 in attendance. That's over five visitors for each disciple. Please keep all of these new sister congregations in your prayers as they embark on saving the souls of these new cities and new nations for the Lord. And while the Global Leadership Conference is in full swing, we thought we'd share with you the highlights of some of the other conferences that took place this past few weeks. The Pacific Rim Missions Conference in Manila, Philippines on June 10th through 12th was entitled Fan Into Flame. 750 disciples of our Southeast Asia sister churches gathered from congregations in Manila, Cebu, Davao, Baguio City, Phnom Penh, and Guam. Also in attendance were multiple guest speakers from Los Angeles. Among them were world sector leaders, Drs. Tim and Leanne Kernan, Tony and Therese Untalon, and our movement leader, Dr. Kit McKean, as well as our Mercy World sector leaders, Nick and Denise Bordieri, now of Mexico City. The highlight of Friday's first general session was Kip Sermon and titled, Our God is a Consuming Fire. Inspired by Kip's faithfulness for 50 years as a disciple praying for his mom to baptize, which he did just 20 days before on May 21st, 
Each disciple took on Kip's challenge to baptize one of their own family members by the end of the year. At the Saturday night Kingdom Banquet was the appointment of three incredible Filipino couples as evangelists and women's ministry leaders. Josh and Maruha Llanos, Ramir and Ina Peralta, and RJ and Vin Castro. On Sunday, Heaven rejoiced witnessing 13 baptisms as well as the restorations of Ned Lamb, who has now become the leader of the newly formed Ho Chi Minh Vietnam Remnant Group. Making the conference even more unforgettable was the ICCM commencement ceremony where a total of 41 BA students graduated. To close out the stirring Pac Rim Conference was the magnificent send-off of the Naga Philippines mission team, led by the dynamic JC and Ina Jose. Later Sunday evening was the wedding of Josh and Ruha Llanos, the leaders of Baguio City. The wedding was presided by Kip, whom Josh and Maruha affectionately call Lolo Kip, Tagalog for Grandpa Kip. The Llanoses were raised up by Mark and Micah Carbonell, who have been called back to be the right-hand couple to the Chalinors in Manila. The 2022 African Missions Conference theme was Compelled by the Spirit. This year, it was hosted by the mighty Lagos Nigeria Church. Despite many visa challenges, 248 souls participated with delegates from 10 nations, Ivory Coast, Cameroon, Democratic Republic of Congo, Uganda, South Africa, Ethiopia, Brazil, Mexico City, United States, and of course, Nigeria. The Lord blessed the conference with the baptism of a Nigerian medical student despite heavy persecution and the restoration of Tamru Belhu of Ethiopia. In addition, the saints cheered at the appointments of Talani and Kate Abiyadun as evangelist and women's ministry leader at the first general session on Friday night, as well as for Osas Atembe, appointed as evangelist on Sunday before he powerfully preached the word. Finally, on Sunday, the Kampala mission team, led by Osas and Ariel Atahembe, was lifted up to God in prayer and officially sent down out to win this Ugandan city called the Pearl of Africa. Everyone has heard of the movie capital of the world, Hollywood. Many have heard of Bollywood in Bombay, India, which produces more movies than Hollywood. In fact, 1,000 each year. But few have heard of Nigeria's Hollywood in Lagos, the third largest producer of movies in the world. We mention this because the newly formed Nigerian remnant group in Ibadan is led by former ICOC evangelist and now movie star Akin Lewis. A lot Along with his wife, Olaide, and his friend, Kehinde Akende. Here's a clip of one of Akin's movies. You know, I allowed those thieves to push me into office mm. because I thought once I got there, I'll be able to fix all the country's problems with a wave of my hand. But <laughs> look at it now. Uh, Dad, hmm? the new Patriots can help you. We can work together to give you a free and fair election. <laughs> the new Patriots? Yes. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You guys are just idealists with uh, fire in your bellies. Uh, you don't even have a constituency. Dad, hmm? more than half of the country's population are under age 40. That's our constituency. Imagine the new Patriots bringing the youth together to help. Uh, stop dreaming. Me, so I stop dreaming. <laughs> My God. Okay, I think I know what to do now. And now for an exciting announcement from Dr. Raul Moreno coming to you from Sold Out Press International, more commonly known as Soapy. It brings us great joy to announce that Sold Out Press International has recently published four new groundbreaking books. The first is entitled Call to Change the World by Dr. Helen Sullivan of Miami, which is a life application commentary on the Book of Ruth. The first commentary ever to be released by Sold Out Press. Secondly, we have Didach by Dr. Tim Kernan. Didach means doctrine or teaching in the Greek. This study guide will help enhance basic ministry training by teaching Bible Christian doctrines. For those longing for a more robust prayer life, Dr. Joe Willis of Sydney has authored another staple for your spiritual library, The Art of Spiritual Warfare, Practicals for Becoming a Prayer Warrior. In this book, you will find a plethora of practicals to greatly enhance your prayer life. And the fourth soapy book to be published this month is The Law and the Sabbath, written by Cal Bartholomew, now of San Francisco. Various religious sects adhere to aspects of both the law and the Sabbath, and as a result have confused and misled many. In the Law and the Sabbath, 
Kyle presents a brief yet clear and objective Bible study of both topics that will enable the truth seekers to develop a deeper understanding of the scriptures. Do not miss out on these incredible books available on Amazon. And thank you, Kip and Chris Adams, for editing these books. Next, we'd like to share with you about Mercy Worldwide. Mercy is an acronym for Maximizing Efforts for Relief Care and Youth and is the benevolent arm of the International Christian Churches. While there are Mercy programs hosted throughout the world year-round, June 18th marked the 13th annual day of Mercy. Unique among faith-based charities is that every member of the International Christian Churches is a Mercy Ambassador. Therefore, in 2022, Mercy's volunteer force has collectively conducted over 1,000 projects and programs worldwide. Thank you so much, Nick and Denise Bordieri, who oversee all of these wonderful efforts. Of note was during the June African Missions Conference in Lagos. A very special Mercy event was organized under the leadership of Lagos Mercy Coordinators, Tony and Jacinta Adamo. This event was hosted at Mercy Signature Project, the Real Mercy School, and over 300 people attended this celebration. Each of the children received a food basket from Mercy, and after a tour of the Real Mercy School, the Mercy Ambassadors went on the Mercy Walk throughout the neighborhoods surrounding the school. As God would have it, the Mercy Ambassadors caught the attention of a nearby doctor visiting the area, who was so blown away by the informative and joyful parade after researching Mercy Online he reached out, eager to visit the church. He is now studying the Bible. Following the parade, everyone met in a tented area. There, the 100 school children who attended the AMC Mercy event watched their classmates on the school's drama team perform a skit that highlighted the challenges they faced growing up in their community. Abuse, homelessness, lack of food and nutrition, no money to pay for school fees, and a lack of medical attention. The children and the parents express their appreciation for Mercy's help in overcoming these obstacles and battling the exploitation that is so prevalent in poor communities around the globe. And there were countless ways on this year's Day of Mercy that the ambassador showed compassion and action to the elderly and youth in their communities. We're so proud and grateful for the thousands of Mercy ambassadors who served tirelessly in their communities, living out Jesus' words, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Yes, and thank you so much. And now, family, we bring you a day in the life of Alejandra. My name is Alejandra. I am Colombian, and I became a disciple three years ago. God saved me in Moscow. I got there because I got a scholarship to study my master's degree in chemistry at the Dmitry Mendeleev University of Chemical Technology. After six months of living there, surrounded by many people, a feeling of loneliness, sadness, and emptiness came to me. I remember that my first prayer to God with all my heart was, God, if you listen to me, please find me, because I have already done everything to find you and I couldn't. I have gone to many churches around Moscow and Moscow is so big. And surprisingly, the next week, my friend came to my room and she invited me to go to a church where she was studying the Bible. At that moment, I understood that God was answering my prayers. I began to study the Bible, and in a month, I was baptized on May 19th, 2018. Since the beginning, I began to dream to go into the full-time ministry. For me, that dream is bigger than any other dream that I had before, because it is incredible how you can be used by God to advance His kingdom and to help people to be reconciled with Him. Indeed, when I finished my master's degree, I received a call from Colombia. It was Tulio and Baitza. They called me for going into the full-time ministry, but I understood that it was not them, but it was God. My day usually goes like this. I wake up at 5 or 6 a.m., I have my quiet time, I get ready to leave home, and I go to campus. I live five minutes away from the main University of Colombia, Universidad Nacional de Colombia, so I arrive there at 9.30 a.m. or 10. I share my faith with people. I have the privilege to organize several Bible studies and enjoy times of discipleship with my sisters because we can help each other through the Bible. 
Usually on Sundays after service, I used to go to my physical family's house to take care of them as well, to love them and serve them. This is great because they can see through my lifestyle how Jesus is, and now they are interested about the Bible a little bit more. Being into the full-time ministry here in Colombia since September of last year and had the privilege of resigning from working in a multinational in my professional area for Jesus has been powerful. I mean, every single day I am learning how Jesus loves, how Jesus teach, how Jesus listens, how Jesus make everything possible. And that's great because I have the opportunity to be closer to Him. Definitely my life started when Jesus saves me, saved me. With Him, everything is an adventure. Definitely I am living the best life of all. Thank you so much, Alejandra. We are so inspired by your heroic faith and example. And now it's time for good news from around the world. To help aid in several of the monumental transitions happening globally, Kip and Elena McKean went on a six week missionary journey, ensuring that we are all unified in every church everywhere. Early in June, the McKeans visited New York City as Brandon and I handed the church leadership to Corey and G. Blackwell. As mentioned before, in mid-June, Kip preached in Manila, Philippines during the glorious Pack Rim Missions Conference, where he helped initiate the Ho Chi Minh Remnant Group. Early July, they flew to Warsaw, Poland to hearten the church as its now 13 Ukrainian refugee members were with the McKeans in Kiev for five weeks last fall. As well, the McKeans wanted to encourage Michael Williamson's son in the faith, Viktor Maslianikov, the newly appointed Warsaw evangelist who the McKeans have known since he joined the movement in 2006, and to introduce Michelle Williamson's newest daughter in the faith, Sandra Smith of LA, as the new Warsaw Women's Ministry Leader. So moving to Kip and Elena was the visit to the Mercy Ukraine. Ukrainian Refugee Center housing over 300 women and children. Sunday worship brought tears to the McKean's eyes as it represented the kingdom being apolitical and totally unified, as songs were sung in Ukrainian, Russian, English, and Polish. Since Kip had preached Friday night at the Devo where 30 gathered in Victor's small apartment, so at the service, Sandra shared powerfully at communion, Elena shared for contribution, and Victor preached a GLC-level sermon entitled, Love Changes the World. With 15 disciples present, 31 were in attendance. Lastly, the McKeans stopped in Mexico City to strengthen this key Crown of Thorns church. They spent quality time with their right-hand couple for the movement, Dr. Raul and Linda Moreno, the Latin America world sector leaders. They also enjoyed several hours with Nick and Denise Bordieri, making plans for Mercy in 2023. On Sunday, July 24th, Raul and Linda went old school imitating the McKeans as they did a slideshow for communion about their visit the previous week to the vibrant churches of Bogota, Colombia and Lima, Peru. Elena again shared a heartfelt contribution and Kip preached on the power of the Holy Spirit. There were three amazing baptisms that day. So amazing. Now the Africanist world sector continues to inspire the movement as the Yaoundé Cameroon Church planted just one year ago by Amadou and Angele Santora with just nine other disciples from Abidjan set a new record for baptisms witnessed within the first year of planting with 147 souls baptized into the kingdom, breaking the record of our New Delhi Spartans who God blessed with 141 baptisms in their first year in 2019. And speaking of India, Raja and Debbie Rajan placed an extraordinary prayer goal before the Lord for the month of May in the Indian churches to have 50 additions in those 31 days. And God gave them exactly 50 baptisms. What a victory to be sent out with the Lord's stamp of approval as the Rajans await in Bangalore for their visas for further training in Miami with Sage's World Sector Leaders, Drs. Matt and Helen Sullivan. In Kiev last year, a woman named Katya went to Women's Day and was moved to study the Bible. However, she was not ready to make Jesus Lord of her life. After the Russian-Ukrainian conflict began on February 24th, Katya fled to Poland, where she met our sister Lesia and began to study the Bible again. Missing her homeland in Ukraine, she moved back to our new planting in Lviv, and on June 5th, Katya was baptized into Christ, making her the first baptism for the church. What a victory. 
When Richie and Elizabeth McDonald assumed leadership of the zealous Minneapolis church in June 2021, their prayer was to double in the first year. God has answered their prayers as they witnessed Jonathan, Daryl, and Gloria added to the kingdom, and Samaj placed membership in June this year, taking them from 16 to exactly 32 strong. Praise God and congratulations, Minneapolis. On July 17th, the Baguio City ICC, led by newly appointed evangelist and women's ministry leader Josh and Maruha Llanos, held their first anniversary service themed Conquering Mountains with a record 163 in attendance. That's more than four visitors to each disciple. On June 19, the Santiago Chile Church, led so wisely by Alfredo and Alejandra Anuch, witnessed the beautiful baptisms of Estella and married couple Julio and Marcella. Hearts were moved as just before her baptism, Marcella shared in tears, please don't stop looking for the lost. More people like Julio and I are outside looking for a church where the truth is preached and practiced. Over in Kinshasa, Democratic Republic of Congo, the church continues to thrive as their leaders, Mickey and Lily Ngungu, remain in contact with them from New Delhi, India, where Mickey is receiving cancer treatments. In May alone, they witnessed 46 souls added to Christ. And in June, another 25 souls were baptized. So inspiring. The Sydney Church's campus ministry is on fire and was blessed with four exceptional campus baptisms the weekend of July 15th. Belinda studying psychology at Western Sydney University, Emma studying biomedical science at the University of Technology, Sydney, Terry studying business at Technical and Further Education School, and Prashal, a megatronics engineering student at University of New South Wales. Welcome to the family. On July 17th, the fiery London ICC, led by European world sector leaders, Michael and Michelle Williamson, held a football tournament themed church service. Of course, some nations call the beautiful game soccer. The competition was intense and the preaching was even more intense as the hearts of the disciples and visitors were moved not only for the sport, but towards God even more so. The service ended with the moving baptism of John Sai Ping Chi, a student at the prestigious Imperial College, who is soon completing his master's degree in chemical engineering. Our valiant sister, Hortense Poda, who was only 54 years old, the women's ministry leader of the Bujumbura Church and wife of evangelist Vanant Poda, went on to glory early July 1st. She was unknowingly suffering with ovarian cancer and diagnosed too late. Although our hearts mourn the loss of our dear sister, we're so grateful that she finished the race strong and will now wait for her crown of righteousness. She told her disciple daughter Cecilia just a couple days before she passed, I pray they release me soon so I can go back to the mission field. Such a great heart for the lost. Wow. Our hearts are with the Poda family and the Africanist world sector as we celebrate Hortense's remarkable life and the spiritual impact that she continues to have. To close out today's episode, in this year of the spirit, God is moving more powerfully than ever before the pandemic. In the first eight months of 2022, we have witnessed the plantings of 15 churches and Lord willing, we'll see the historic send off of six Operation Eagle mission teams at the conclusion of the GLC. Auburn, Alabama, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Iowa City, Iowa, Kansas City, Kansas, Louisville, Kentucky, and Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. So the international Christian churches have a presence in 37 of the 50 states of America. Prayerfully, we'll see five more churches planted in September through December, giving us 26 churches planted in this year alone, the most ever planted in one year. So God's Spirit has multiplied the sold out movement from 42 disciples planting Los Angeles in May 2007 to over 10,000 disciples in 136 churches in 53 nations. As Kip many times reminds us at the end of his sermons, this is not a movement of men. It is the very movement of God. Thank you for your sacrificial missions contributions and tearful prayers that the Spirit is using to propel the gospel into all nations in this generation. Again, greetings family at the 2022 GLC. Until next time, this is Luke and Brandon Speckman reporting to you from the Good News Network. The best news you'll ever see. global movement. Amen?
Hey man, it's um, I have some few announcements for us. Um, this coming afternoon at 1.30 p.m., we're going to have a Bible Talk Leaders meeting. So for all the Bible Talk Leaders, please stay uh, until 1.30. We're going to have our Bible Talk Leaders meeting. Amen. And then this coming Wednesday, it's going to be a congregational uh, midweek uh, service because we're going to run through our program for this coming Sunday. I don't know if, if you know what's happening on Sunday. Uh, but on Sunday, it's going to be our anniversary service. Amen. So uh, we have to be there on our, on our Wednesday uh, um, devotional. Amen, family? And so with that, I want to en uh, encourage everyone to please stand up. Amen. Let's have a five minutes fellowship break. Amen. We Let's have a break. break. We have coffee on the left.
All right, family. Have you guys great, had, had a great break? Yeah. Amen. Let's all stand up and let's sing to our God again. Come and go with me to my father's house. Whoa, to my father's house. Whoa, to my father's house. Come and go with me into my father's house. Where there's joy, joy, joy. There are many rooms in my father's house. Whoa, to my father's house. There are many rooms in my father's house where there's joy, joy, joy. And everything's alright in my father's house. Whoa, in my father's house. Whoa, in my father's house. And everything's Alright in my father's house where there's joy, joy, joy. And we're gonna have a good time in my father's house. Whoa, in my father's house. Whoa, in my father's house. We're gonna have a good time in my father's house where there's joy, joy. Into my father's house, into my father's house, come and go with me. Into my father's house, where there's joy, joy, joy. Where there's love, where there's love, love, love. Where there's peace, where there's peace, peace, peace. Where there's joy, joy, joy. Amen. We can all be seated. Amen. To prepare our hearts for the communion, we'll be seeing I am a poor wayfaring stranger. I am a poor, I am a poor, wayfaring stranger, wayfaring stranger, while traveling through, while traveling through this world of woe, this world of woe. Yet there's no sea, yet there's no sea, no storm nor danger, no storm nor danger. In that bright world, in that bright world. To I'm going there to see God's children. I know they'll meet me when I come. I'm only going over Jordan. Try. 
Good morning, brother and sister and friend in this room. So please turn to the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 15. This time we do the communion, which is uh, we share in thinking about Jesus Christ. So let us read Mark, chapter 1, verse 15. The time has come. He said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Today is an honor for our family, as I am a father of my beautiful daughter. I grow her up since a little until now. As the Bible says that now is the time. So the time is three years ago. She's go back to her real father, Amen. which is God. Amen. And then God changed her life. So today, brother and sister, thank you for God. Thank you for our leader, Rema and Parita, Rema Parita and Ina. You gave us a great ball time. Gave my daughter a chance to share her life. So let us uh, welcome and listen Nisa's my daughter, and also my sister in Christ. Amen. My name is Sukunisa. You can call me Nisa. I can and today I'm going to share what is the cross mean in my life. Wow. I grew up as a family disciple. Before I was baptized, I see myself as a very shy person. I didn't like to talk much with uh, anyone. And I see that David is very prideful and lazy. And it's not obeyed when my parents talk, and also I see that it's hard in my, harder in my heart. I see also my life is selfishness. I think about myself first. But in 2019, a missionary from Philippines came here. They came to save the lost. One is my, my life. But before I decided to study Bible, I really see this the good example of the brother and sister in our church. They love me and uh, the way they give me is really warm. I really me to want to study Bible and want to know more about the kingdom. 
When I study Bible, I see that how much is God love me and love all of us equally. Even though He is the Son of God, but Jesus is humble and be a slave to the mankind. To save us from the corrupting world. What has impacted me the most is the love with sincere of Jesus Christ. The love is limited that Jesus gave in my life. And also is the reflection of the brother and sister example in my life. And they call me even those my weakness point. Change me to be a boldness. They call me sing out the first and then uh, submit submission to uh, the role, the leader. I would like to really grateful to Bong Ina, Bong Jera, and Bong Iri. They are touch me a lot of in the Bible. That is coming to my uh, baptism day in 25 August of 19, uh, 29. Almost three years now I became a disciple. <laughs> As my father read Mark chapter 1, it is how urgent I am to need to seeking the kingdom of God. First, let's repent and believe in uh, the uh, good news. Because I didn't know that what is going to happen to my life in the, uh, uh, tomorrow. So the cross is meaning the love is a change my life. I would like encourage of the friend who visit us this morning. Please open the study Bible and change your life. Finally, I would like to say thank you for Bong Remer and Bong Ina. Please give me opportunity to share my life. And thank you for the brother and sister in this church. And so, uh, listening what I'm sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Brother and sister, let us bow our heart and pray for the communion. Father, thank you for the changing life of my daughter. It's not only my daughter, but all the brother and sister in this room. Lord, we know that where we're from and what we did in the past. But because your salvation, because the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we can call us a new day. We can repent. We can have something that we can go forward to. Lord, thank you for the church, for the good news, for the Bible that's come to this nation. The Buddhist nation that we not even hear the Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that in this room, so let's open our heart and mind so we're going to humble and seeking more than who Jesus is. And know more than what is the salvation, why Jesus died on the cross. Lord, as we are disciples, that we can do the break of bread and the wine. Is a represent to your body and your blood that as we remember where we are and what we was we are. Lord, thank you for the salvation that we call us a disciple today. I pray all in Jesus' name. Yeah.
need to be careful on the way that I use English. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I've been a disciple as 25 years. So I remember when I came to church at the first time, I know that is a poverty is. I grew up in the province. I can say that I have only one meal a day. <laughs> Nothing. I walk to school, to university, not many clothes I have, even those the home to stay. I stay at Pagoda, to be honest. So I, I grew up at the Pagoda one year. So what is mean, but never learn. What is mean is giving to have people. When I finish my university, I work for organization, non-government organization for more than 10 years to help poor. I travel from province to province. In Siem Reap, I walk in through the village to village. We build a lot of homes, houses for people, water well. We give in chicken, we give out piglet to people. We, we have a dream to help people living up from poverty. And in the government of Cambodia, we say, if you, let, you earn less than one dollar a day, you're in the power, poverty. So let us read the scripture, Matthew chapter 6, 1 to 4. The Bible says, be careful not to be practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with the trumpets. As the hypocrite do in the synagogue and on the street, to be or no by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who see what is done in secret will reward you. Amen. What does the scriptures say? I find out that sometimes the scripture is really challenging us, even though myself, amen? I know that you, you have been giving so much to many places, to many people. I'm sure that you are a kind of person. But here, let me tell you something. Where is a great place to give? It's here. So Father will rewarding you if you're giving here as, as a great place in this room. So here is the church that we very honestly anything of you giving to the poor. You see that we have mercy's uh, banner here. We, we really have to the people. And also here I see Kim Lang here is from the uh, Mercy uh, Scholarship. So, so we work hard to raise this money to support the children in Cambodia to get uh, education. So she's the one that get a scholarship from Mercy Cambodia Mercy International. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, let us not waiting what we were willing to do. Just set aside of what you can blessing the poor people by putting in the envelope uh, that our usher will give you or you find in the sheet. So let us bow down and pray to uh, Father. Father, thank you for today that we have a living life. God is blessing us as a great life already, Lord. We have a food to eat, we have a place to stay, and we sit in this room as a comfortable room. We just have finished our coffee, Lord, this extra uh, 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 meal that we have. Lord, thank you for all of this. But beside that, we have many people that are still living in poverty. Still people that are hopeless, homeless, and even there's no food. Lord, we just create this event. We want to raise this money to support them. To, see, to, to tell them that as God has allowed them so much, not just only this room, but for them as well. Lord, be, uh, help our heart to be right uh, the way that we give, the way that we sacrifice our uh, resources to uh, the right person and the right place. Lord, thank you for the church that has grow us and grow everybody up, uh, blessing us that we give to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, amen, family, as we give benevolence, let's sing, let it rise. <coughs>
Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. So what is it? Oh, 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 oh. Let it rise. Oh, let the joy of the Lord. Let the joy of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, summer to sing. Oh, 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 let it rise. Oh, let the love of the Lord, let the love of the Lord rise among us. Let the love of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Among us, let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise. Oh, somebody sing, oh, 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 Amen. Before we hear the word of God, let's sing Lead Me to the Rock. <laughs> Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, higher than I, higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You're my tower against the foe. Hear my cry, oh God. Answer my prayer, answer my prayer, answer my prayer. Hear my cry, oh God. Answer my prayer, oh my tower against the foe. Lead me to the rock, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, higher than I, higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is. Higher than I, oh my tower against the foe. I'll take refuge in the shelter of your wings. The shelter of your wings. The shelter of your wings. I'll take refuge in the shelter of your wings. You're my tower against the foe. Lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock that is. Higher than I, higher than I, higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You're my tower against the foe. I fulfill my vows day after day, day after day, day after day. I fulfill my vows day after day. You're my tower against the foe. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, higher than I, higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You're my tower against the foe. You're my tower against the foe. You're my tower against the foe. Amen. Well, good morning again, family. I don't know about you, but I am overflowing with joy and gladness this morning. I'm not convinced. 
Are you guys fired up to be here this morning? Amen. Amen. You know, God is an amazing God. Say amen if you are amazed by God. Amen. amen. That, that's the kind of fired up that we want to hear, you know. Like, amen. You know, I, I think we got to practice a little bit here. So let's practice a little bit, okay? So it's, if I say something that's like, uh, okay, you can give me a one clap. Show me your one clap. One. 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 No, it's like level one. I mean level one. Like, yeah, that's level one. Okay, how about level two? It's like I say something in the scripture that's like, oh, amazing. Okay. Good. good. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, what about level three? Level three clap. There you go. Hey, Amen. Uh, uh, I said something a little bit good that hits you. Give me a level four. Level four. Yeah. Okay, how about level five? Level five. Oh, you see your brother and sister convicted by the scripture. Level six. Okay. You feel convicted deep in the heart. Level seven. You think that God is going to change the world. Level eight. Your family is going to get baptized. You're going to be dating or married. You are so fired out when it comes to dating or marriage, huh? Amen. Let's give God a level 10 club. Amen. That's what we got to give God. Amen. A level 10 club all the time. And with that shouts of, Amen, bro. Amen. You know, I ju we just came from, uh, from uh, LA. And I just want to say this before I, I just want to say how much I miss you guys. Um, like every day I was, uh, I was calling my wife, and right after every end call, it's like it's a pain in my heart that I can't be together. You know, and I'm always crying. So, um, you know, I just miss you, babe, so much. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and, uh, but it's great, we're back, amen. I know Bong Riti feels the same way uh, to Bong Pana. I don't see Bong Pana. Yeah, maybe she's in the bathroom, but. <clears throat> and I'm just fired up to be here with you this morning. I hope you guys are fired up to be in God's kingdom this morning, too. Amen. Amen. Let, let, let us pray. Amen. Before I mess things up, let's pray. My dear Heavenly Father, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, God, you created the heaven and the earth in just six days. You place every stars in the skies and you call them by name. God, you know the numbers of, of our hairs. God, you recreated uh, our inmost being. You've given us life. And you wanted us to live life to the fullest, Father. And how, how privileged are we, Father God, that we can be here together this moment, at this room, worshiping you. God, we, we don't deserve this. We don't deserve your kingdom, Father. Thank you for Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. God, this morning, I just want to dedicate you this day. Lord, it is not about us. It is about you today. We just want to worship you with all of our hearts. We just want to give you our, the, the highest glory, honor, and praises. God, be with this a lesson. I pray that, that uh, uh, the lesson that you have taught me and that you continually teaches me, Father God, uh, uh, I'll be able, Father, to just... Uh, Put it into people, Father. God, use me as an empty vessel. May you be seen, Father God. And may your word have an impact into each and everyone's life. God, thank you. May you be glorified this morning. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, family, can I preach this morning? Yes. Amen. Because whether you like it or not, I'm going to preach. Amen. But first, I want to first uh, thank Kuya Banban and Ati Rachel. Kuya Banban is a bit sick today. But let's give it up to them. Amen. Uh, thank you for Kuya Kevin and Ati Mary as well. Uh, thank you for Bong, Bong Pana. Uh, thank you for each and every brothers and sisters you know, that took hold of the church and stayed faithful, even though Bong Riti and I are gone for two weeks. Uh, I, I just want to say that uh, I really miss you guys so much, and I, I miss the Phnom Penh International Christian Church. How I wish 
that we are all together in LA. You know, if I only have a million dollars, I could apply everyone to, uh, to, uh, to LA. You know, because uh, 3,500 disciples from all over the world gathered. It's super amazing. The singing was super electric. It's like, the way, the way we sing today, it's like, <clears throat> this is not GLC type yet. We're going to get there, amen? And, and then the brother, his name is Andre Law, is like ripping all the songs. Waka, waka. And that's how, that's how he sings. And, and like everyone is fired up. And I just wish that everyone is there. You know, uh, we went there for uh, international campus leadership uh, seminar, which is amazing. After the ICLS, I just want to get back and do the ministry. You know what I mean? We haven't started a GLC yet. I already, already want to go home because I'm already filled with a lot of scriptures. And so the goal is that in the next two years, there's going to be another GLC. Do your best to save money. Amen? So that you can come and uh, we can be a part of that amazing GLC. Amen? And then we grew the church to like 2,000 disciples and maybe we'll have it here in Cambodia. Amen? <laughs> So um, I'm just I'm just blown away. Until now, I can't still digest. I have to like reread all my notes. I have to like rewatch all the lessons that happen, because there's just so much lessons to learn in ICLS and GLC. So um, I hope we can impart something from you on the fellowship and uh, when, when when we get time together on our D times. Uh, but I hope you are encouraged by the merch that uh, that has came. Amen. Amen. So Vanessa, I gave Vanessa the, 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 the sweater yesterday. It's like, she's super fired up. Feels like she's going to heaven already. <clears throat> and she wore it in the middle of like a hot season. You know what I mean? She and Irie. <laughs> uh, I, know, I know now that Vanessa's love language is receiving gifts. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But, Amen. I'm just glad that Bongrite and, uh, and I are now back here in Cambodia. So maybe, maybe right now you're, you're excited too. And then, hmm, Raymond and Riti is back. What are they going to teach us? You know, uh, what, what, what is going to change? And so uh, the title of the last lesson is simply, The Spirit Will Lead You to Change. Wow. Amen. The Spirit Will Lead You to Change. It's not me who will lead you to change. It's not Bonity. It's not any one of us. It's the Spirit. That will lead you to change. Amen. You know, we live in a, in a world that needs a lot of changes, don't we? Um, it's crazy because the Philippines, I'm a Filipino. Uh, in any case, you forgot my name. My name is Raymer. Amen. <clears throat> I was just gone for two days. But I'm a Filipino and I notice as I look that Philippines has the highest pornography rate. You know, it's so bad. You know, um, in Cambodia, 57% of Cambodians are smokers. And there is so many people that is enslaved in human trafficking here in this country. And they say that it's because of, of the influence of Thailand and, and China, but, but I see this as it is the sin of the people. It is sin because there's a different spirit that is leading the world astray. Amen. And he needs, and God needs, disciples to change this world. Amen. And yet, we will not be able to change this world. We will not be able to have an impact in this world if we ourselves are not changed from the inside. And I hope, so I hope that, that you come here desiring, what do I have to change this morning? I hope you come uh, on Sunday, of course, number one, to worship God, but also to realize something on our hearts. What needs to be changed in my life? Amen. You know, I went to, to, to ICLS and GLC, and that, 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 that's the heart that I wanted. Like, God, what are you trying to change in me? What do you want me to change so that I can help other people more to change? So this morning, the lesson is simply entitled, The Spirit Will Lead You to Change. Point number one. I have two points for you. I hope I have enough time to explain everything. Amen? 
Point number one, the Spirit of God will define you. If you want the Spirit to lead you to change, you have to allow the Spirit of God to define you. Turn with me in Matthew chapter 3. If you don't have Bible, sit with someone who has a Bible so that uh, you'll be able to read with us. We are a Bible church. We love to open the Bible. We love to read the scriptures. And also, if you don't have a pen and paper, make sure that you're taking notes. Amen? <clears throat> Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. The Bible says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, alighting on him. And the voice from heaven said, this is my son, whom I love. And with him, I am well pleased. Amen. Point number one, the Spirit of God will define you. You know, in verse 15, the Bible says that Jesus wanted to be baptized to fulfill all righteousness. You know, Jesus, he lived a sinless life. And what is baptism for? For the remission, remissions of sin. And so Jesus doesn't really need to be baptized. He's okay. He's going to heaven either ways. He lived a sinless life. And yet in Jesus' humility, he wanted to be baptized. For what? To fulfill all righteousness. You see, humility is the only way for the Spirit to change you. This is a big display of humility in Jesus. Wanting to be baptized. Can you imagine? He lived a sinless life. But for the sake of righteousness, he wanted to be baptized by John, who is also a sinner. And I believe that as Michael Williamson said in, a, in, a, in, a, in GLC, he said there's only two paths. The path of humility or the path of humiliation. Choose what you want to, to go through. See, Jesus never sinned, so there is no need for him to be baptized. He did this to fulfill all righteousness. Therefore, deciding not to be baptized is a flat-out unrighteousness in, plan, in front of God. And I want to be so grateful today that Nana Rose has come to be baptized. It's going to be an amazing time. And, uh, you know, I've been waiting and praying and praying and praying and praying for this time. And now Nana Rose has decided to be baptized. Amen. You know, I'm so, so encouraged by the Agape Bible Talk for your, uh, for your perseverance. And, like, studying the Bible even late nights with Nana Rose. Now is the time. Amen. Amen. You see, in verse 17, the Bible says, Verse 16, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, alighting on him. And the voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. In him I am well pleased. You see, God is, was well pleased with Jesus. Why? Because Jesus chose to be righteous. Because Jesus chose to be righteous. And the Spirit told Jesus, this is my Son, whom I love. In Him, I am well pleased. You see, you want, if, if we want God to be really pleased with us, we have to choose righteousness all the time. And that's why God says as well, seek His kingdom and His righteousness. And everything will be given to us as well. The Spirit told Jesus, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And so if you're a disciple today, if you're a disciple of Jesus, God is well pleased with you. God loves you and he's proud of you. 
And yet sometimes we live like we're unloved. And sometimes we live like someone who is super discouraged, having self-pity, thinking to ourselves that I'm alone. You know, we have to let the Spirit of God define us. The Spirit will tell us who we are and what we're going to do. We have to listen. And the world has been telling us so much garbage. And sadly, maybe for some of us here, we have been listening to what the world is trying to tell us. And we're trying to listen to it and listen to it and listen to it that we don't hear the Spirit anymore. And Satan is telling you, you're getting old. You need to have a boyfriend. You need to have a girlfriend. The last time I checked, God told Adam, it is not good for a man to be alone. It was God who tells Adam. It is not Adam telling God, I, it, it's not good for me to be alone. Why? Because for, God, for, for Adam, he has a great relationship with God. And that's why for him, doesn't need anyone. And yet God is the one who tells him it's not good for this man to be alone. So I'm going to bless him with a sister. So if you're a brother right now and you're struggling to have, I think you need to fix your relationship with God first. Amen? So that will, God, God will tell you it's not good for this man to be alone. But also to Eve, he also said, in Proverbs, it said that he who finds a wife finds what is good and finds favor from the Lord. So if you're a sister, what do you have to do to be found? You've got to be a wife first. Are you a good wife to God? Are you a good wife to our God? Do you have a great relationship with God that you can ask for a boyfriend or a, or a husband? You know, this is, this is what the world is trying to tell us. That you need all of these things. But what we need is salvation from God. What we need is our great relationship from God. Because if God says that you have to seek me first and my, and my righteousness and my kingdom, and then I will give all of this to you, whatever you need, then that's what, where we should place our faith in. Because God is faithful. You know, the world tells us, your family needs you. You better work your face off and get that money. You have to study so hard to finish your school so that you can provide for your family. And your relationship with God is now compromised. And you, sharing your faith to other people, is now compromised. I want to ask you a question this morning. Have you been listening to the lies of this world? Have you, li have you been listening to the whispers of Satan? Because the truth is, Satan just wants 10% of your attention. Just 10%. You entertain him and you're toast. God says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. God wants you 100% of your commitment, 100%. And guess what Satan needs? Just 1% of you, not obeying God. And then we're toast. You know, I will never forget the moments that I have listened to Satan's accusation. I will never forget. There was times in my, heart, in, in my life that Satan was telling me, you will never be pure. You can never overcome pornography and masturbation. You can never overcome that. It's always, and the world is telling us that it's part of being a man. It's part of being a woman to be impure. No. When my wife got pregnant, what Satan tells me that I kept on thinking, will I be a great dad? 
Will I be a great father to my son? And Satan keeps on telling me, you'll never be a great dad. You're just going to repeat what your dad did. Satan keeps telling me that I'm a coward. You're never going to call disciples to change. You're not going to call them to repent because you're, you're living the same way. You're impure. You're a sinner. How dare you to call other people to repent? You're just the same. You can never lead a church. You can never be an evangelist. You can never do anything great. Who you are right now, that's you. No more changes. And I've listened to these accusations of Satan until the point that I am super down. I'm doing self-pity. Yeah, maybe it's true. I don't know if you're in the same, in the same place as I was before. Yeah. But let's turn our Bible in Jeremiah chapter 1. <clears throat> we got to let the Spirit of God define us first. So that the Spirit can lead us to change. Jeremiah chapter 1. Let's see how God called Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4. The Bible says, The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord. I said, I do not know how to speak. I'm only a child. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you and to say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. You know, in those times that I was telling myself all these lies, that the garbage has, has, has been throwing me. This is the scripture that I read. Yeah. The same as Jeremiah. And God said, before I, I, I formed you, I knew you. Before you were even conceived, your mom and dad is just thinking of making you, but I already know who you will become. And it's the same to each and every one of us here. God, before you were even formed, God knows you. And God has appointed you to one day become his disciple. And we can give many excuses just like Jeremiah. Oh Lord, I do not know how to speak. I'm too young. Jeremiah is, uh, is uh, 17 years old, 21 years old at this time. And we can say that in 21 years old, people can already speak. And yet, before in the Jewish nation, you cannot start mean doing ministry not until you are 30 years old. That's why Jesus started his ministry at 30 years old. And yet in here, God is calling Jeremiah on his early age. Why? Because he is the last prophet in the exile. And Jeremiah... Preach the word. Jeremiah, preach what God wants to tell the Israelites. Because he is appointed a prophet to the nation. You see, if, if God, if the Spirit of God did not define Jeremiah, he will not be able to preach his word. Amen. We are incapable of changing this world. Not unless we have the Spirit of God in us. And I remember this, and I say, amen. And I got some great discipling time with Ricky and with all my, uh, with, uh, with the people that's discipling me. And I told to myself, man, I am called by God. I was appointed as a prophet to this nation. This is who I am. This is what I should be, because this is what the Spirit tells me to be. And I want to challenge you, family. This is who you are as well. You are a prophet to this nation. Don't say uh, that you are, you are uh, American, you are, you are, uh, you are you're Filipino, you are Kamai, you are Thai. You are a prophet to the nation. Amen. The kingdom of God knows no ethnicity. Yeah, that's 
The kingdom of God knows no language barriers. The kingdom of God only knows people that desires to follow God and preach His word. You know, our identity in Jesus is what Satan wants to always take away from us. And yet it is the Spirit of God that must define who you truly are. I want you to say this with me, family. Are you guys ready? As I say it, you also say it. Amen? Amen. I am a son and a daughter of God. I am a disciple. I am loved. I can change. I am a prophet to this nation. This is who you are. <laughs> this is who we are as a family. Amen? My challenge for you, family. Let the Spirit of God define you so that the Spirit of God can lead you to change. Are you guys with me this morning? Amen? Amen. Amen. Point number two. The Spirit of God will not only will define you, but the Spirit of God will also refine you. The Spirit of God will refine you. Let's go back in Matthew chapter 4. See, in Matthew chapter 3, Jesus was baptized and he was into the Holy Spirit. And let's look at Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit. Oh, this is great. Jesus is being led by the Spirit. Do you want to be led by the Spirit? Yes. Do you want to be led by the Spirit? Yes. Well, in here, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And after that, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. You know, you can never be proven faithful if you are not refined by the Spirit of God through the fires of this world. Amen. You see, it is the Spirit of God that leads Jesus to where? To the desert, to the hard things in life. To be tempted by the devil. That's why Jesus was in, in, in this world. He was tempted. The Bible teaches that Jesus was tempted with every kinds of trials and testing, and yet he overcame. Mm. Setting us the example that even if we are living in this world, we can live a righteous life with the help of the Spirit of God. And yet, we have to know that the Spirit of God will continually refine us. If you're not defined by the Spirit of God, you will never survive the refining of God. Because your faith will be put into the test. And God made it hard and challenging. Isn't that? Even if you're outside the kingdom or inside the kingdom, life is hard. It's just the truth. We got to pick our heart. Let's turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 2 to 6. 2 Chronicles. We're going to see here an example of a king. If you don't know where 2 Chronicles is, it's between Genesis and Revelation. <laughs> oh, it's in the Old Testament. <laughs> Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 14. Let's see how King Asa did it. Amen. <clears throat> oh, I don't have so much time, but amen. <clears throat> Second Chronicles chapter 14, the Bible says in verse 2 to 6, <clears throat> Asa did what was good in the and right in the eyes of the Lord, his God. He removed the foreign altars in the high places. He smashed the sacred stones and cut down the Asherah poles. He commanded Judah to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, and to obey the laws and commands. He removed the high places and incense altars in between town in Judah, and the kingdom was at peace under him. He built up fortified cities of Judah since the land was at peace. No one was at war 
with him during those years for the Lord gave him rest. So we see here that King Asa, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He was a righteous guy. Amazing dude. Asa was committed to God. Well, let's look in 2 uh, Chronicles chapter 15, verse 1. The Spirit of God came upon Azariah, son of Oded. He went out to meet Asa and said to him, Listen to me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you when you are with him. The Lord is with us when we are with God. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, look, he will forsake you. For a long time, Israel was without the true God, without the priest to teach and without the law. But in their distress, they turned to the Lord and the God of Israel and, and sought him, and he was found by them. In those days, it was not safe to travel about, for all the inhabitants of the land were in great turmoil. One nation was being crushed by another and one city by another because God was troubling them with every kind of distress. But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. And so in here, Asa got the remind, reminder from God through the priest. Amen? And, and, and he was reminded to be, you got you to gotta stay faithful. You, you do not give up. You know, there will be so many challenging times and ch challenging situations around you, but you do not give up. God reminded Asa to remain faithful and committed. And yet in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 2, Asa then took the silver and gold out of the treasuries of the Lord's temple and his own palace and sent it to Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus. Let there be a treaty between me and you, he said. As there was between my father and your father, see, I am sending you silver and gold. Now break your treaty with Basha, king of Israel, so he will withdraw from me. Ben-Hadad agreed with King Asa. What did King Asa did? He relied on himself. He took it on his own hands. It was all God who was protecting him and giving him victories all the time because he's committed to God. And yet, when there is war and he thinks that this, this, this kingdom is a threat, he relied on himself. And he took what? The treasures of the temple. And he gave it to whom? The king Aram. The king of Aram, who is a wicked God, who is a wicked king. He took it to himself. Asa relied on the king of Aram and not on God anymore. And Asa did not survive the challenge. He did not want to be in war so bad so that he took it on his hands. Can you, can, can you relate on this? Sometimes when, when, when life is challenging and, and, and the, uh, the hardships of life comes, we took things on our hands. And we want, it, we want to do it ourselves. Asa doesn't want to be refined. He doesn't want the challenges. And yet in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, we'll see what God wants. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to, to strengthen those whose hearts are committed to him are fully committed to Him. God wants full commitment to each and every one of us. God wants to strengthen those people whose hearts are fully committed to Him, who always look for them. You see, God ranges throughout the earth. Is He looking for a good person? Why? Because He, he, cannot, see, he cannot see anything, anyone that is good. The Bible says no one is good, not even one. And so if, if God is going to look for people that is good, he's not going to find anyone. What is God looking for? Hearts that are fully, fully committed on him. That's what God wants. And what does he do when he sees full commitment? He strengthens you. He strengthens those hearts that are fully committed on him. Sometimes we want the strength first, strength first before we fully commit on God. And yet what God teaches is different. 
You got to be fully committed to so that God can strengthen you. Are you guys with me this morning? I want to que- ask you a question. Are you fully committed on your Bible talk? Are you fully committed on your discipling times? On your evangelism? Are you really fully committed on that? The Spirit of God is with us ever since we were baptized. But are you in the Spirit? Are you with the Spirit of God? You know, I love because the GLC is entitled One in the Spirit. And we are called to be one in the Spirit. And that's why we have GNN. The GNN is to, is to let us know that we are part of one movement with one goal evangelize these nations. God wants us to be one in the Spirit. Turn with me in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, and we're going to end up here. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit. So this is how you see that, that you are having the Spirit of God. Amen? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. 24. Those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. This is an amazing passage. You know, the Bible says that we need to have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. This is a singular term. This is a singular term. The fruit of the Spirit. So it means that we all need to have this. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. And the Bible says as well that since we live by the Spirit. Now the question is, are we living by the Spirit? Or are you living on your own terms? The Bible says that since we live by the Spirit, what do we need to do? Let us keep in step with the Spirit. You see, to be in step with the Spirit, we need to keep it. This is something that we need to keep. It is not something that you're in step with the Spirit today, tomorrow is not. We have to be keeping in step with the Spirit every day. It is a decision every day to be in step with the Spirit. That's why your quiet times is so important. That's why prayer life is so important. Why? Because you, you need to be keeping in step with the Spirit every single day. I'm just thinking, family, how can we create a change if we cannot stand on our own conviction? How can we create change in people's lives and call them out to not miss Sunday service if it's okay for us to miss Sunday, ser- Sunday service? If we're trying to escape midweek service, if we're missing on our Bible talks, if we're not having visitors, how can we create change? You know, my challenge for us this week is to create the change because the Spirit will lead us to change. I want to challenge each and every one of us to let the Spirit of God Define you, number one. Get your identity from your relationship with God. Get your identity from, from your salvation, that you are, you are saved, that God has called you to be his disciple. And also, allow the Spirit of God to refine you. Love the challenges that God is giving you. Love those challenges. Why? Because it makes us grow. Those challenges helps us to become a better man and a better woman. And the, the, the first time you fail doesn't mean you're done. You can still get up and keep pushing forward. Let the Spirit of God refine us. 
and let us stay fully committed so that God can continually strengthen us. This is God's way of changing each, each and every one of us. My dear family, let the Spirit of God lead us to change. Let the Spirit of God lead you to change. And let us stay fully committed in every single day. I love you, family, and to God be all the glory. Uh, my name is Don, and I'm with Sister Kendi, and we're going to respond to our service today. Um, it's so awesome to be here today to hear all the preaching and all the sharing. And I've learned that to be a sold-out disciple is defined by having in the church one um, in the spirit. We all should have that. And to be part of that, we should all be in the spirit. I learned from Raph and Jared that we should rejoice in God. I learned from Nisa that we have confidence in God. I learned from Bong Riti that we have to practice mercy and generosity in God. Amen. And I learned from Bong Raymer <laughs> that the Spirit will lead us to change and will define us through the humility in the Spirit and righteousness in God. And also that the Spirit of God will refine us and we will have full commitment in God and we will be strengthened in God. It's such an amazing, amazing learning for today. And I hope you really, um, like when you eat something, you really get the juice of it. Yeah, like, like you know, the essence of it so that you get the nutrients. Amen. I'll... Let uh, Sister Kendi share. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, uh, Raymer, for that wonderful lesson. Uh, I I appreciate the points, you know. And I remember when when I first saw you, like I saw, I saw the merchandise, you know, uh, first thing, and I was so excited inwardly. <laughs> uh, but uh, I was super grateful. But later on, I I've realized that you know. Uh, wearing the the GLC or ICCM shirt, you know, doesn't change my heart if I'm not willing to change. Uh, maybe outwardly, <laughs> but it is the Spirit of God who changes me, and of course, my decision and my desire to continue to glorify God. So, uh, you know, but of course, I'm encouraged. Thank you, Raymer, <laughs> for that. Uh, merchandises but uh with the points you know i love the example of jesus christ how how he was very humble you know to to recognize the need you know to to get baptized and to be one you know together um uh in form of a human and uh, for me it it really uh touches my heart because you know, uh, sometimes we, we can think that we know better, you know, uh, and we we know things and stuff. But just like Jesus, I want to imitate that kind of heart that he uh, he recognizes his need for other people. And at the same time, you know, he wanted to glorify God. And uh, I, I also love the point of uh, being refined, you know, uh, and uh, loving the challenges <laughs> even though there were times that it's really hard uh and for me i have gone through you know relationship challenges but it's it's amazing that as disciples as a king as we are in the kingdom we can talk through things and we can resolve and at the end you know uh, we can be one in spirit <laughs> we can be one in heart and we can continue to glorify god and so thank you raymer for that amazing lesson <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Um, so, brothers and sisters, we let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us walk every day with God. And this time, it's an exciting part. Yeah. We've all been waiting for. <laughs> let us have a, a baptism. Yeah.
Amen. Greetings from the Women's Ministry and Agape Bible Talk. So, I want to first introduce an amazing woman, amazing mother. Her name is Nanay Rose. So, she is Raymond's mom. <laughs> Our dear brother Raymond. And she's an example of a worshiper that God has been prepared all throughout his, her years. We witnessed her struggled. We witnessed her fight to find the truth. We witnessed her, even this morning, you know, everyone, Nana Rose is persecuted. But the Spirit worked on her, and she's here. She fighted, and she stand on the truth, and to be right with God. And for more sharing, I give you Irie Palma to share for Nana Rose. Mommy Rose, uh, this is it, you know. Uh, but first, I want to share uh, one scripture. And uh, this is in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. So this is the command of Jesus for his disciples before he went up to heaven. Amen. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So this is scripture, Mommy Rose, uh, will be your best friend scripture as you enter the God's amazing kingdom and your journey in your personal relationship with God. And uh, I pray that you'll be continuously be led by the Spirit to continue to dream for God, to evangelize the whole world. And I'm so inspired that uh, you bring like you start, you, you start starting, you're starting it in your house in a way that you're having the desire to, to begin it in, in your house. And by bringing Kenneth and Ate uh, Zari here and Prairie Christian and Kuya Eds as well. And uh, I love you so much and to God be all the glory. Mom. I let you mommy rose to share. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Yeah. yeah, so um it's just been four four months since I, I stood here and for uh the baptism but um for my baptism but yeah uh, this is uh, my mom's uh, baptism right now and I just wanna read something from the Bible. So it's gonna be on Psalms. Um Psalm sixty two verses one and two. So here it's, uh, the Bible says, uh, Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. Truly He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. So um, Ma, I just, I just want to tell you that um, in life, especially as a disciple, you will, there will be times that you will be um, persecuted. There will be times that you will face hardships. There will be times that you will feel that you're going to give up. But um, we have the sisters around here and also um, us. Amen. And me, of course. Amen. Yeah. And uh, I just, I just want to encourage you because um, uh, as, as, anyone, uh, as most of you know, I, I'm not sure if you guys know, but um, my mom is just, um, yeah, my mom is just um, the only child. So all through his li uh, all through her life, he was um, or she was looking for. Um, she was she she was having a hard time um, taking care of my uh, taking care of my grandma, and she's why we we were there. But here, I'm just happy that it's not not just gonna be. Um, he she's not just gonna have additional sons and daughters, but also um, brothers and sisters in life. And I think th this is this is what makes me happy. This is uh, this is just uh, what I'm just th just thinking of that is uh, making me um, happy because you won't she she will not think that oh I'm just alone 
and she has uh, brothers and sisters now in the kingdom yeah. and uh, i'm just grateful that we have I, there comes this time <laughs> because for i will just end it here And I will give Nana Rose to share. I have my copy. <laughs> Come on. I just did it here in, in this church. So, good morning again. Especially to God and everyone here. Thank you for giving us another day, Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. So, first of all, let me introduce myself again. Please understand that speaking English is not really easy for me. But in Proverbs 3.13, blessed are those who find wisdom those who gain understanding. I'm Rose Austria, the only daughter of my mom who passed away 2016, and the solo parent of four boys, include Raymond, who was God's instrument Why I'm here standing in front of you. <laughs> Praying that God will give me the courage to face the truth and nothing but the truth to so help me, God. Amen. It was during the pandemic when life went incomplete until one day, while we are busy talking about those politicians in Philippines and the elections, Raymond rebuked us saying, you are busy with politics, but are you guys don't want you to go to church? I was confused at the time what he was talking about, but that made me interested, though, so, yeah. Seems like yesterday, I was sitting on that chair as a visitor, wow. just observing and supposedly to know who or what kind of friends that Raymond has. But to my surprise, wow, my focus wasn't anymore for my purpose, but the message brought by Raymer. As I was listening to him, I noticed he isn't a tall guy, but has a big heart serving God. I was touched by the message and rebuke. Amazing. And he is, he introduced his wife, Ina. Oh, wow. He was blessed to have a beautiful and godly wife. Amen. Yes. <laughs> I was touched by the messages, especially from the Bible itself. And I was able to say thank you to Raymar before I left in this church and to you who guys who are very friendly. Though I am already a senior citizen, but I feel the same age when I'm when going with you. Indeed, I believe that friends are blessings from God. So please allow me to thank first to God who brought me here and to be a part of PICC family soon. To my son Raymond, to Ina, and with the baby, of course, <laughs> Rachel and Ban Ban. Oh, I miss Ban Ban. <laughs> to Airy, thank you everyone for all your effort and sacrifices, rain or shine, for the laughters Amen. and fellowship, and most of all. The way you explain the scriptures I read, that made me understand how to be a real disciple of God. Amen. Thank you guys and to everybody here, to my children who are here, Raymond, Kenneth, Amen. 
and Zari. Amen. I thank God for blessing me and my family, such a wonderful people like you. May God bless everyone. Lastly, again, I want to bring all praises and glory to you, O oh God. Thank you. It's amazing, Nay. For the two most important question, uh, I will have at the racial. Come on. Amen. So indeed, there's a perfect timing for everything. So, Nay, we are so grateful that you will be a uh, part of the family very, very soon in just a few seconds. But I need to ask these two important questions. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, was crucified for your sins, died and was buried, and on the third day he rose again and now seated at the right hand of God? I do. Yeah. Amen. What is your good confession, Mommy Rose? Jesus is Lord. Yeah. Amen. And because of your good confession, I can now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of your sin and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and you will be added to the kingdom of God. So uh, for Nanny Rose, we will give gift <laughs> from your fam for, for from your new spiritual family, which is Phnom Penh International Christian Church, and a bouquet and Bible and a gift from Agape Bible Talk. Wow. And, amen. So. Amen, family, let's all stand up and we're going to sing our final song before we all witness Nana Rose get baptized in that area where the pool is. Amen? Let's sing. He said to go to every nation. He said, he said, tell everyone. He said to make them true this time. And then the job will go. Jesus said, go and make disciples. And then baptize them in my name. Teach them to obey all I have taught you, and I am with you all the way. Teach them to bow before the Father, and teach them to flee from sin, and teach them to love for one another. Make them true features of Jesus. Said, go and make disciples. And then baptize them in my name. Teach them to obey all I have taught. And I am with you all the way. Let's go to each and every nation. Let's go. Tell everyone. Let's go. And make them do this. Let's go. Until this world of Jesus said, go and make disciples. And then baptize them in my name. Teach them to obey all I have taught. And I am with you all. Jesus said, go and make disciples. And then baptize them in my You got to teach them to obey all I have taught. And I am with you all the way. Amen, family. We are dismissed, but we are all can witness the baptism of Nana Rose on that side. Amen.